Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we will discuss a very important talk article published on 25th January 2017 and the name of that talk article is Surgical Management of Heavy Menstrual Bleeding. Let us talk about the key contents of this article. First of all, heavy menstrual bleeding affects 1 in 5 premenopausal women and can significantly impair the quality of life. Secondly, the management options for heavy menstrual bleeding are diverse and include a variety of medical, radiological and surgical treatments. Third important point, the surgical treatment options are endometrial ablation, hysterectomy and myomectomy. And the last point is that the treatment choice for heavy menstrual bleeding should take into account the underlying pathology and the woman's preference and fertility needs. Let us discuss the myomectomy as a surgical option. Uh, factors that cause the heavy menstrual bleeding in uterine fibrite include these factors. First of all, the mass effect uh, increasing the endometrium surface area. Secondly, the fibrite encroaching on the endometrial cavity, preventing the contractile compression of the shedding of the uh, menstrual endometrium. Thirdly, the production of endothelial growth factor and fourthly, the increased vascularity and lastly, the altered prostaglandin production. Let us talk about the prevalence and significance of myomectomy. The prevalence rate of uterine fibroid include, first of all, for white women, it is 70% and for black women, it is greater than 80%. And what is the significance of myomectomy? Myomectomy remains the only surgical option if fertility needs to be retained. And there is good evidence to support the removal of subcucosal fibroid to increase the pregnancy rates. Let us talk about the leomyoma subclassification system intracavity or submucous fibrides were originally graded under the Wamsteker classification which was adopted by the European Society for Gynecological Endoscopy. So type 0 is totally uh, intracavity, type 1 is more than 50% of intracavity fibroid and in type 2 we have less than 50% of the uh, intracavity fibroid. Means in type 2 we have more than 50% of uh, intramural. And here in this picture, you can see all that classification. Now, let us talk about the hysteroscopic myomectomy, which is written in this talk article. And what are the indications of hysteroscopic myomectomy? Those include, first of all, the submucous or intracavity fibroid. Those are best managed by hysteroscopic myomectomy, which are a likely cause of abnormal uterine bleeding and also subfertility. Let us talk about the stereoscopic myomectomy technique. The most common technique is to use a surgical resectoscope and to resect the chips from the fibroid. For type 0 lesion, there is little or no need for the resection into uterine wall. And for type 1 and type 2 fibroids, as the fibroid is resected, there is a tendency for fibroid to extrude into the uterine cavity. So these need more resection. And another point is that the continuous resection can result in inadvertent perforation of the uterus and great care must be taken. Now, what is the importance of intraoperative ultrasound during hysteroscoping myomectomy? Intraoperative ultrasound can be used to determine the wall thickness and accurate preoperative imaging to determine the depth of extension, extension uh, into myometrium or whether it is uh, it extends into serous surface or not. So remember these important points, the wall thickness and the depth of extension is uh, basically studied by using the ultrasound. Now the role of GnRH analog uh, has also been uh, discussed in this uh, talk article. GnRH analogs can be used to first of all reduce the uterine uh, fibroid size and secondly for possible fluid absorption. But there is uh, inconclusive evidence on the reduction of operating time. Let us talk about the resection of the larger fibroid. Resection of the submucous fibroids of greater than 5 cm in diameter after preparation with GnRH analogs should only be undertaken by experienced hysteroscopic surgeons. Now, the core loop technique is also discussed in this talk article and it's written that some hysteroscopic surgeons use a cold loop technique to enucleate the fibroid in the total, fibroid in total into the cavity and after that they remove the fibroid by resecting it into the chips or by morcellations. And what are the types of the cold loops? We have the special robust uh, cold loops that are used rather than the fine. 
Now, the role of uh, miniature morselators have also been discussed in this talk article, and it's written that newer ways of dealing with the uh, smaller intracavity fibrites, generally up to two centimeter, have evolved with the development of miniature morselators, which can be deployed down by a stethoscope side port. And this allows the lesions to be removed in an outpatient setting without the need to retrieve the specimen separately following detachment. Now, abdominal, uh, abdominal myomectomy has also been discussed in this talk article. And what are the indications of abdominal myomectomy? Uh, first of all, intramural, subserosal, and uh, pedunculated fibrites are the indications because these are often removed uh, by. Uh, abdominal myomectomy in an effort to first of all reduce the uterine volume for pressure symptoms and secondly uh, to afford the menstrual relief for the woman wishing to retain their fertility and while there is evidence that the increased uterine volume secondary to the fibrites can lead to increased menstrual loss there is distinct lack of evidence to prove that the removal of anything other than the intracavity fibrites lead to the normalization of the menstruation let us talk about the techniques of myomectomy, which is written in this uh, talk article. Myomectomy is most commonly undertaken by open laparotomy, although there is a significant morbidity associated with this procedure. Now, what are the complications of myomectomy? First of all, adherence uh, to the myomectomy wounds are especially common. Secondly, intraoperative hemorrhage is one of the complications of myomectomy. Uh, important question is that how to manage the complications associated with myomectomy. So, in that, first of all, how to reduce the uh, adhesion? That is very important. Adhesions can be uh, reduced by uh, careful attention to hemostasis. Secondly, tissue handling and possible use of anti adhesions products. Secondly, how to reduce the blood loss? Blood loss can be reduced through, first of all, down regulation with GNR analogs. Uh, secondly, with the use of intraoperative tourniquets and vasopressin. Let us talk about myomectomy by using the minimal access surgical approach. Uh, using minimal access surgical approach, both a laparoscopic and a robotic can, first of all, um, significantly reduce the tissue handling. That is an advantage of it. And another advantage is that it speeds uh, the post-operative recovery following myomectomy. But the disadvantage of this procedure is, is that there are limitations, however, including the size, number, and position of fibrides, uh, which will determine whether it is feasible to undertake the and um, to be undertaken laparoscopically, I mean to say that. Let us talk about the use of laparoscopic morselators and advances in uh, the minimal access surgical equipment technology, including the development of effective laparoscopic morselators, allow the removal of large amount of fibrides uh, through about 12 mm pore. Now comes the hysterectomy. Hysterectomy means the surgical removal of the uterus. That remains the most uh, common surgical procedure performed in gynecology. And the rates of hysterectomy for the benign diseases have been uh, dropping steadily in the USA and UK, almost certainly as a result of, first of all, endometrial ablation, and secondly, with the use of levonorgestrel releasing intrauterine system. Now, what is the advantage of total or subtotal hysterectomy? One reason for preference of total or subtotal hysterectomy is that, first of all, the recovery time if performed by laparotomy is much the same for both and so guarantee of no bleeding, no further smears or future removal of the cervix for whatever reasons perhaps uh, favor the total. Now, what is the disadvantage of total uh, or subtotal hysterectomy? The morbidity is, however, greater with increased risk of the hemorrhage and uh, subtotal hysterectomy carries some advantages. Uh, and that is with the improvements in minimal access surgery, subtotal hysterectomy has, been, has become a simple procedure which avoids the bladder dissection and the increased morbidity associated with uh, operating it uh, around and uh, removing the cervix. Let us talk about the subtotal hysterectomy. Traditionally, the subtotal hysterectomy was the default procedure when removal of the cervix was considered difficult or hazardous, such as in uh, grade 4 endometriosis. Subtotal hysterectomy was, however, associated with, first of all, the shorter operative time, lower intraoperative blood loss, lower incidence of the post-operative pyrexia, and lower incidence of urinary retention. 
Let us talk about the surgical approach which roots to choose. Traditionally, hysterectomy was performed by uh, either an abdominal or vaginal route, but laparoscopic hysterectomy has gained popularity over the recent years. The choice of the surgical approach is uh, dictated by, first of all, the presence of the pelvic or extra pelvic pathology, secondly, by the previous surgeries, thirdly, by the body habitus, and then by other associated comorbidities and the surgical expertise available. Let us talk about the abdominal hysterectomy. An open abdominal approach was traditionally the procedure's choice in the absence of the uterocervical prolapse. It is a useful approach when there is coexistent pelvic pathology such as adherence, endometriosis, ovarian masses, large fibrites, and where there is a restricted access to the laparoscopic instruments and where the morselation of the presumed fibrites could risk the dis disseminating unrecognized neoplastic cells. And laparotomy is the sensible option. Now, by what route the hysterectomy is mostly performed? Despite this and the fact that majority of the women with HMB have a uterus smaller than it would be at 10 weeks of pregnancy, over 60% of benign hysterectomies in the UK are still undertaken by an open abdominal route. And this uh, was also the incidence in USA over 10 years age and UK over 20 years of the age. Let us talk about the uh, laparoscopic hysterectomy. Laparoscopic hysterectomy refers to the procedure where at least the part of the operation is performed laparoscopically. It can be further subcategorized into, first of all, the laparoscopic is, uh, assisted vaginal hysterectomy, secondly, laparoscopic hysterectomy, thirdly, total laparoscopic hysterectomy, and fourthly, laparoscopic uh, assisted supracervical hysterectomy. Let us talk about the vaginal hysterectomy. A vaginal approach is the procedure of choice when hysterectomy is performed for the uterovaginal prolapse. And the limitation of the vaginal hysterectomy are first of all, uteri larger than the 14 weeks of pregnancy. Secondly, the presence of concomitant ovarian pathology. And thirdly, the surgical training is required. Let us discuss the uh, robot assisted hysterectomy, which is discussed in this guideline, this uh, talk article. And uh, the robot assisted hysterectomy has been promoted as having the advantage of, first of all, 3D vision. Secondly, intuitive learning with a full range of instruments movements compared with the uh, laparoscopic hysterectomy. And third important advantage is that with a uh, less risk of the surgeon fatigue and spinal and shoulder problems are there with a robot assisted hysterectomy. But we have certain uh, disadvantages uh, as well associated with the robot uh, assisted hysterectomy and those are first of all the uh, absence of the haptic feedback and uh, secondly the excessive cost. Now, what are the risks and complications of hysterectomy? It is essential that surgeons uh, undertaking any procedures are, uh, are able to counsel the patient with regard to the associated risks and complications so that fully informed consent is obtained. Okay, so counsel and consent. These are important points to be remembered. The most common complications of hysterectomy can be categorized as, first of all, the infectious, secondly, VTE, venous thromboembolism, thirdly, the genitourinary, uh, track uh, related complications which is present in one to two percent of the cases and we have certain organ injuries which include the gastrointestinal tract bladder ureteric injuries the bleeding problem is also there and we have another problem like the nerve injury neuropathy occurs in 0.2 to two percent of the cases and there might be vaginal cuff dehiscence as well let us discuss some more about the complications of hysterectomy. Hysterectomy is the only procedure that can guarantee amenorrhea and is uh, clearly more effective in treatment of the HMB in comparison with the endometrial ablations. However, hysterectomy is associated with uh, certain complications and those are the perioperative or post-operative morbidity, longer convalescence, delay in return to the work and the short-term complications like sepsis, blood transfusion and post-operative pyrexia or there might be a wound or wound hematoma. So these are all the post-operative complications of hysterectomy. Now this table shows the LASMR or stable blue classification of the fibroid. Okay, you can see that uh, we have a score zero of the fibroid if the size of the fibroid is less than two centimeters. If it is more than 2 to 5 cm, the score is 1. Okay, if we have more than 5 cm fibroid, the score is 2. And 0 to 4 score is for group 1, where the low complexity hysteroscopic mimectomy is done. 
and when the score is 5 to 6 that is group 2 with a high complexity um, hysteroscopic myomectomy is done and consider GnRH use and consider two step procedure when score is 7 to 9 that is group 3 and consider alternative to hysteroscopic techniques now this table show the comparison of the roots of hysterectomy for vaginal hysterectomy, the operation time in minutes is 14 uh, minutes in mean. For abdominal, uh, it is 50 minutes and for laparoscopic, it is 70 minutes.